In this lesson, we'll continue our view of PSAT Reading Test 2, Section 1. We're now on the second passage out of five. This is the social science passage. And let's read the reference information. This passage is adapted from Moises Nam, the end of power from boardrooms to battlefields and churches to states. Why being in charge isn't what it used to be. It was published in 2013. So I assume you've read this passage. I will just review the opening paragraph. The number of democracies in the world today is unprecedented, and remarkably, even the remaining autocratic countries are less authoritarian than before, with electoral systems gaining strength and power, and, and people empowered by the new forms of contestation that repressive rulers are poorly geared to suppress. Local crises and setbacks are real, but the global trend is strong. Power continues to flow away from autocrats and become more fleeting and dispersed. And so this is really explaining that today, we have many more democracies than autocracies, and the this trend is strong. It's continuing to flow away and become more fleeting. And there's also a graph that is helpful. If you see, starts in 1950, the solid line of the autocracies, the dotted democracies, they were about the same, 1950, but then there's a huge spike of these totalitarian regimes. They peaked around 19, let's see, 77 or 80. And... Conversely, there's there's many fewer democracies, but then there was a shift, and each went in the opposite direction. They crossed, so that means an equal amount around 1990, but now today, many more democracies than autocracies. And so let's take a look at the question. The first one is number 10. Over the course of the passage, the main focus shifts. So this is an organizational pattern. This is a general question you may elect to answer the specific questions first and then return to this. We'll just do this one in order, but let's take a look. We read the opening paragraph. If you look at the next paragraph, remember the opening paragraph is just explaining this phenomenon. There's many more democracies today than in the past versus autocracies. The next paragraph, the data confirmed this transformation. 1977 was a high water mark. It's really still explaining this phenomenon. But then if we look down to the next paragraph, starting in line 23, what caused this? This is really now the analysis. These are the causes of the shift from autocracies to democracies. And so let's take a look at the choices. It shifts from a discussion of the increase in democracies and the openness, political openness, to an analysis of the causes of the increase. This is the answer, right? It's explaining this this shift, this surge, and then why. And so the answer for 10 is A. Let's take a look at 11. In question in uh, line 20, what does put mean? This is a word in context. So look at the word, try to predict it before looking at the choices so you don't get biased. So let's take a look at line 20. The word is put. And I'll read a little bit above for context. Compare that with 1989, when only 69 of 167 countries made the grade. Put another way, the proportion of democracies in the world increased by just over half in only two decades. So put here really means to like to to said another way, or it's it's um it's basically just phrased another way. And if you look at the choices here, imposed, placed, it's not incited like to incite a riot. It's stated, it's just said or phrased another way. And that's the answer. D. Twelve is another word in context, what does held out mean in line 31? So let's try to predict it. 31, Western governments and activists encouraged dissent and held out rewards for reform, such as membership in NATO or the EU or access to funds. So these are Western governments that are encouraging dissent of the autocracies and they're, they're really holding out rewards. So try to predict what, don't get confused by the word out. Just think about, give me one word that would mean what would hold out this phrase means. And what they're doing is they're really just, they're offering, all right, as an incentive. They're, they're giving some type of reward. They're holding out. They're offering. And let's take a look at the choices. Yeah, and we, this was actually pretty straightforward, I think, to predict it. It's definitely D. It's not resisting rewards or awaiting or avoiding. They're giving, right? They're providing incentives. They're offering. So the answer is D. And let's take a look at 13. Which choice 
best supports the claim that increased openness, political openness, is a widespread global trend. So we're looking for evidence. This is not a two-part question. We're just looking for evidence that political openness is a widespread trend. We really have to look at all of the, the line references, I think, to find this evidence. So we'll start with 23 is the first one. Evidence that this political openness is a global trend. So here's 23, what caused it? Local factors were at work. Noted some big forces as well. There's nothing here about political openness as a trend for 23. The next line is 26. Poor economic management eroded their popular standing. A rising middle class demanded better public service. Again, there's a little bit of reference to the government, but there's nothing specific about political openness and, and a global trend. It's like a 41 to 42. A news of democratic triumph spread from country to country. Greater access to media by increasing literate population encouraged emulation. So be careful here. I know you see this word spread, but this is about the media. And the question specifically says political openness. Let's look at the last one, 59 to, or 56 to 59. Even autocracies are less autocratic today. According to one study of the world's democratic electoral systems, Brunei may be the only country where political electoral politics has failed to put down any roots. This is definitely about political openness, about, about democratic electoral systems and politics. But they almost do this like inversely. If, if Brunei is the only country where they failed to put down, what does that suggest? Well, that means that all the other countries have put down these meaningful roots for electoral politics because they are open, and this is a widespread trend. This is a little tricky, but it's almost sort of indirect, and I think you know you get, certainly get it by elimination. The other ones don't really mention that at all. And so the answer for 13 is D. And we'll do the last two on this page, 14 and 15. And this is a two-part question. Remember to always scan down at the second question. So here's 14 and 15, you see the evidence. So we're looking for evidence to answer the passage characterized the state of political openness in autocratic regimes as unexpected in that. This is really what I think is a key word. We're looking for some type of evidence of openness in autocracies as unexpected. And this is, remember we talked about paraphrase, there has to be some evidence about openness as being unexpected. And that'll help you get the evidence. And so we're gonna look to find the evidence first, and you can kind of skim through these. I'm not gonna go through all of these choices. I'm just gonna, I think it's a little bit easier for this one just to highlight the answer, which is C for the evidence. And then we'll go back and answer 14. But this I think will help explain we're looking for that unexpectedness in autocratic regimes. And so let's take a look at 59 to 63. This is the evidence. With far fewer repressive regimes in the world, right? Repressive regimes, those are autocracies. One might have expected the holdouts to be places where freedom and political competition are increasingly suppressed. But in fact, the opposite is true. How elections are central to democracy, but not the only indicator of political openness. And so here's we have, we're talking about autocracies. One might have been expected the holdouts to be places where they're increasingly suppressed, but it's the opposite. And so the answer I gave you is 56, 59, that was 13. Let's go back and find, um, I'm sorry, it's 59 to 63. Just looking at this one, but it's, it's the line, the reference I read. Now we're gonna go back and answer 14. The state of political openness is unexpected in what? So remember, it's unexpected, why? Because even though they would expect those places, let's just go back and read it one more time. Even though we might have expected the holdouts to be places where freedom and political competition are suppressed, autocracies, they're saying the opposite is true. And so let's take a look at number 14. Instead of becoming more oppressive, autocracies are becoming more democratic. That's the answer, right? The opposite of true. Even though we'd expect them, these places to be where it's suppressed the most, the opposite, that's the unexpected part. And the answer is A.